Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to identify corruption in our lives and accept your correction. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, hope beyond corruption hope beyond corruption. Our text deals with uh, the increasing corruption on the earth. And I think it would be a good idea for us to somewhat deal with the uh, increased corruption uh, in our society in this day and age. Our text is found in Genesis chapter six verses, uh, beginning with verse five. Uh, Genesis chapter six, verse five reads, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. That's verse eight. Uh, and I read from the English Standard Version of Genesis chapter six, verse five through eight, the English Standard Version. Verse eight, uh, we'll center on mostly next week, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now, remember we are dealing with this, the uh, series of God wants to be with us. God wants to be with us. And the subject for today's message is hope beyond corruption. Hope beyond corruption. We are living in an age uh, when corruption is running rampant in our society. It might be seen in those in higher positions or higher statuses because they uh, capture the camera attention, the news media attention, more than the average person. But then corruption is alive and well in all of us. Maybe you feel that since you've been showing up uh, with other believers for years uh, and worshiping God, uh, and you've reached the ripe old age of senior citizenship, that you are exempt. Corruption is not limited by age, race, family, financial status, or political affiliation. Corruption uh, is the physical degeneration or decay of the body, and that is all inclusive. All inclusive. Everybody is included in it. All have sinned and come short of God's glory. So anybody that is an organism or alive is in the process of decaying day by day. No matter how careful we try to eat or live towards moral perfection, these bodies are decaying daily. All we have to do is just look in the mirror and we'll see that we are different from what we looked like 10 years ago or even less where these bodies are decaying. The church, for instance, which is the body of Jesus Christ has corruption at work in it and it's decaying uh, uh, to the point that if we lose our connection with our creator, with God through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, then corruption is running rampant 
but through Jesus Christ, we are renewed daily. Ooh, I love that. Uh, and we are be, and, 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 and no matter what, we are all being uh, decayed out of God's original intent for us. Now, our hope is sure in the fact that God has promised us some things. And one of the main things that God has promised us is uh, that he will never leave us. He has promised to always be with us. Uh, and he, he has promised that he will not leave us in these present states that we're in the present conditions that we are in, the present world that we're in. And only God can change our depraved existence. Noah found grace in God's sight. And it was not something Noah did, but rather what he couldn't do for himself. Biblically speaking, from kiver to kiver, You'll find if you if you really pay attention to what the scripture is saying, it's all about what we can't do for ourselves, but what God can do for us. And then there are times when when God has uh, His free will working in us, that He desires to do some things through us to affect the change in this world and the people's lives who we come in contact for the better. Our God is still and always will be specializing in things that seem impossible to us. We have to learn to look not at what we cannot do, but what the Lord can do. We must always be mindful of certain facts about God. Like, there's nothing too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for God. God can do what no other power can do. And the list goes on and on. Acts chapter 2, verse 26 through 28, and this is the King James Version, says, Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Verse 27 says, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And verse 28 says, Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, and thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. And then Acts uh, Verse 31, chapter 2, verse 31 of Acts says, He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Now we as believers have the example of Jesus Christ and our connection with Jesus Christ as the basis of our rejoicing heart and our glad tongue. And nightly, we can lay down and rest in hope. Corruption is also uh, one of the definitions uh, for corruption is that it means the uselessness of human life through the power of sin. Seeing our lives in the way that if God was to leave us alone, to leave us up to our own device, just let us have things our way. If he, if, if he was to never do like he did uh, uh, Noah, Noah found favor in God's sight. In other words, Noah found grace in God's eyes. And if we don't find some grace in God's eyes, we are most miserable. So uh, another definition for corruption is also the, the, uh, uh, the uselessness of human life through the power of sin. And when you find yourself in that state, 
you'll do anything to anybody, including yourself. And we are living in a society where a lot of people see their lives as useless. And they are doing any and everything to anybody, including themselves. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding and, uh, an exceeding great and precious promise, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our bodies, sown in corruption, will be raised in incorruption. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42 says, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, and it is raised in incorruption. And then uh, chapter 15, verse 50 says, Now this I say, Brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And one of these old days, this corruption all about me and you will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Corruption will be changed to incorruption. And then uh, we don't have to worry about corruption inheriting incorruption or the kingdom of God. Now Noah received rest and comfort from God because he was confident that God, God would make a way for him to escape the great corruption in the land. Though they had the same name, and, and, and we're kind of connecting a few things here, so, so uh, I pray that you would pay clo close attention. Though they had the same name, Lemek, in the line of Seth was radically different from the Lemek in the line of Cain. Seth's Lemek favored a son, or a father rather, a son named Noah, who walked with God and was used of God to save the human race by building the ark, and a remnant was saved and continue the Masonic promise. Now Cain's Lamech, remember Cain was the one that slew his brother, the first murder. Uh, Cain slew his brother Abel. Now Cain's Lamech murdered a young man, this is later on after Abel's death. Uh, let's see, uh, Cain's Lamech murdered a young man who had wounded him and then boasted about it to his wives, his wives, plural, about his evil deed. Now, in our text today, it's important that we, and in society today, it's important that we always have hope. I'm reading a book now, uh, and, and so far, it's proven to be difficult to follow, but it's very useful. You can kind of grab uh, the essence of it as you go from chapter to chapter. And it's titled Hope in Despair. And it's all about uh, uh, suicides. And when corruption runs rampant, suicides run rampant also. So hope takes over and pulls us out of uh, corruption. You got to have hope. And, and you'd be surprised at some of the strange places that God can birth hope into our lives. In the book I'm reading it last night, I was reading on the treadmill about this young man that came to the emergency room. And the, the book is written by a, a doctor, a surgeon that spent most of his years in uh, the emergency room environment. There was this young man that came to uh, the emergency, was brought to the emergency room by paramedics after he had put a pistol to his forehead and pulled the trigger. 
he had lost all hope. And then about five years later, another man, young man, was brought to the emergency room. He was paralyzed throughout his body. Uh, he couldn't feed himself, couldn't change himself, couldn't do anything for himself. But the uh, surgeon was approached by the nurse that was on duty that night and said, do you remember him? And the surgeon said, no. She said, he's the same young man that came in about five years ago that had committed, tried to commit suicide. The same man. So the same person can be totally different because of hope. And this young, young man now who had been paralyzed for five years from uh, uh, the act of trying to commit suicide was in a much worse condition physically. All reasons in the world to have no hope at all. But he had hope. And, 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 and when his parents made it to the operating room, they rejoiced because they got to meet the man that had told their son about where to find hope. And all of us can find hope in Jesus Christ. So uh, Lemek's great concern about mankind was that uh, mankind would find comfort and rest in the midst of a wicked world where it was necessary to toil and sweat just to stay alive. Life was difficult. And the only hope that true believers had was the coming of the promised redeemer. And our only hope now is in the promised redeemer that has come and redeemed us from our depraved condition. Lemek's name uh, had a son and named him Noah, which sounds like the Hebrew word for comfort. His prayer was that his son would somehow bring to the world the rest and comfort that people so greatly needed. And this son, Noah, in many ways, pointed to the Son of God that came to bring rest and comfort to a people that was greatly in need. Centuries later, weary people could hear the voice of Jesus Christ saying, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest to your soul. That's Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Now, we have to be careful that while we're in the world, that we don't compromise. That we don't compromise. After chapter 3 of Genesis, Satan isn't mentioned by name much at all. But he and his demonic host are at work doing their utmost to keep the promised redeemer from being born. This was Satan's purpose throughout all of the Old Testament's history. After all, he didn't want to have his head crushed by the Savior. As mentioned in chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. God had declared war on Satan and the deceiver intended to fight back. And we ought to realize that Satan is still fighting back. We are living in a time when our consciences have been seared and deadened to sin. That sin in our thoughts uh, leads to action. And they can go unnoticed until sometimes it's too late. Some of Satan's most successful devices is compromise. And if he can mislead God's people into abandoning their privileged position of separation from sin and communion with God, then he can corrupt believers and lead us into sin. 
he did this to Israel in the land of Moab in Numbers chapter 25 and Psalms number 106, verse 28 through 31. And also after they had conquered the land of Canaan, they were still led into compromise. The prophets warned the Jewish people not to compromise with the idolatrous worship of the pagans around them. And that same warning is going out today. Don't compromise with the idolatrous worship of the pagan around us. And you have to be careful just because a building has a steeple on it, has a cross somewhere on it, it does not mean that worship of God is taking place. More on that next, uh, another time. And then the nation experienced shameful defeat at the hands of their enemies. And so often, uh, we wonder why things are happening to us. Things are, we wonder why God is allowing things to happen that, 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 that we feel that shouldn't happen to us because we are God's folks. Perhaps it's because we are compromising way too much. Perhaps instead of worshiping God, we are worshiping, uh, following the name it and claim it leaders and worshiping uh, money, loving money more than we do God and more than we do people. I'm just saying. A good question to ask is, what was Satan's plan for defeating God's people in Noah's day? To entice the godly line of Seth, the son of God? to uh, sons of God, rather, to mix with the ungodly line of Cain, the daughters of men, and, 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 and right there, put a pin right there because next week we're really going to break that down some. And if he could get God's people to, uh, or, or rather, uh, Seth, godly line to mix with the ungodly line of Cain, Cain, then he could cause them to abandon their devotion to God. It was the same temptation that Christians face today. Be friendly with the world, love the world, and conform to the world, as stated in Romans chapter 12, verse 2 rather than separated, be separated from the world, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, through chapter 7, verse 1. But of course, this could lead to being condemned with the world, based on 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 32. Lot's wife and sons-in-laws is an, a great example of this danger that we're facing in the society that we're live, living in. If we, are, if we compromise with the world, if, 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 if we end up being condemned with the world, we could end up like Lot's wife and Lot's son-in-laws. We are out of time now for, uh, for this week, but come back next week. I'm on tippy toes already in the preparation for next week's message. And we'll pick up there with the correct interpretation of chapter six, verse one through seven, and bathe in hope beyond corruption. There's always hope of a brighter day ahead. Why? Because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, on an old rugged cross, God's promised son, the Messiah, hung, bled, and died so that we could live. They buried him, but early the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hands. So that's it for this week. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to give, help, help us to Give up the taste for corruption and seek your favor 
In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. And with that, uh, I pray that God will give the increase and that you will benefit from what you have heard today. Uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.